Hi, my name is Doug Kelly, and I'm a machine learning solutions engineer and instructor for the Advanced Solutions Lab in Google Cloud. In this lecture, we will be discussing explainable AI, the degree to which humans can understand and trust a ML model's predictions. Our discussion will start with an overview of explainable AI and the relationship between interpretability and explainability. These terms are often used interchangeably, so I will tease apart their distinction. We will then cover a taxonomy of interpretability techniques before going deeper on the implementation of one technique called integrated gradients. We will then conclude at the frontiers of interpretable ML methods by discussing challenges in a few future research directions. My goal in this presentation is to introduce you to explainable AI and motivate you all to incorporate explainability into your ML workflows. To build an intuition for model interpretability, first consider the image on the left of a fireboat. Imagine that a classifier correctly identifies this as a fireboat. With the explainable AI, your job is to explain why. A technique called integrated gradients can highlight the pixels that were important to that decision, giving you insight into what the model sees. The image on the right is called a feature attribution mask. The purple pixels comprising the boat's water cannons and jets of water are actually highlighted here as more important than the boat itself to your model's prediction. As the modeler, you must be asking yourself then, how will my model generalize to new fireboats? What about fireboats without water jets? In addition to explaining the model to yourself, the model builder, you can leverage these techniques to explain it to stakeholders as well. Let's look at a high impact application to improve the preventative diagnosis of diabetic retinopathy, which you can learn more about in other talks in the series. Incorporating model confidence scores and scores plus feature attribution heat maps improves the accuracy of physicians grading images by highlighting frequently missed features and complementing human judgment on hard to predict lower quality images. This shows the power of machine learning and explainable AI to augment human performance. Explainable AI is a research field on ML interpretability techniques whose aims are to understand machine learning model predictions and explain them in human and understandable terms to build trust with stakeholders. Explainable AI is a key part of broader human-centric responsible AI practices, which you can learn about in other talks in this series as well. Interpretability focuses on model understanding techniques, while explainability more broadly focuses on model explanations and the interface for translating these explanations in human understandable terms for different stakeholders. Since these methods bridge machine learning and human systems, the field draws from computer science and mathematics, as well as economics, behavioral psychology, and human-computer interaction. As an engineer, interpretable ML methods are important during the building and operation of your machine learning pipelines. But designing for explainability and incorporating responsible AI best practices is even more critical to the long-term success of your machine learning system. The field of explainable AI is not new. Its early days can be traced back to the origins of artificial intelligence research and the development of expert systems. Since about 2015, there's been a resurgence in explainable AI research that parallels the progress and growing prevalence of applied machine learning systems in society. As adoption of machine learning continues to rise and reach new audiences, increasingly complex models like deep neural networks are surfacing new explainability challenges to engineers and model stakeholders alike. At a high level, there are three stakeholder groups for machine learning systems that drive the dual aims of model understanding and providing human interpretable explanations to different stakeholders in order to build trust. For engineers building models, the focus is more on interpretable ML techniques for model understanding and improving model performance. More complex models can be difficult to debug, understand, and control, thereby impeding their adoption. Conversely, trust is key for model consumers who are looking to understand the impact of model predictions 
more than the model internals. Interpretable explanations build trust with these end users that model decisions are reliable, equitable, and can be influenced to achieve better outcomes. The role of regulators is to ensure model decisions are in compliance with laws and do not amplify undesirable bias from underlying datasets. Interpretable explanations provide audible metadata to regulators to trace unexpected predictions back to their inputs to inform corrective actions. Now that you have a sense of stakeholder interests and model understanding, let's review some common ML workflow tasks and how explainability fits in. Model understanding is critical to many tasks as part of building and operating machine learning systems. Here are just a few of uh, some of my favorite use cases. First, explaining predictions to inform and support human decision-making processes. Interpretable explanations build trust with end users that model decisions are equitable and reliable. Second, debugging model performance to inform corrective actions. Interpretable explanations give modelers deeper feature level insight into the cause of model errors. Third, refining modeling and data collection processes. When aggregating and comparing uh, and compared across dataset splits, interpretable explanations provide a means to identify and alert on common ML pitfalls such as data skew and drift. Fourth, verifying model behavior is acceptable. In particular, regulators are increasingly active in validating that ML decisions are in compliance with laws and do not result in poor outcomes for model end users. Interpretable explanations provide regulators with the means to identify unexpected predictions and inform corrective actions. Lastly, presenting the model's predictions to stakeholders. Interpretable explanations are again critical to engineers to build end user trust and can act as a catalyst to adoption of your machine learning system. There's no agreed upon mathematical definition of interpretability. Interpretability is about the extent to which a cause, this can be a change in a feature value, group of features, or model parameters, can affect your model's predictions. Or to put it another way, it is the extent to which you, the modeler, are able to predict what is going to happen, given a change in input or algorithm parameters. On the left is a small decision tree visualized that shows the learned model binary splits in features and enables you to trace individual predictions back to the feature space. On the right is a neural network visualization in the TensorFlow Playground. You're able to tweak the model features, architecture, and training parameters to understand uh, how the model generates its predictions. Both are interpretable ML visualizations and provide insight for software engineers into model internals and are valuable tools for model understanding and debugging. However, these explanations alone are not meaningful for all stakeholders, nor do all stakeholders necessarily need to understand model internals. It is important to remember that these techniques fall short of explainability of your ML model on their own. What is still missing is a translation interface between model explanations and human explanations. Now that we have established the dual goals of explainable AI being model understanding and human interpretable explanations to build trust, let's dive more into the interpretability methods that you will be engaging with as engineers. Since 2012, the success of deep learning in achieving state-of-the-art performance and even exceeding human-level performance on some individual tasks has come with a trade-off in explainability. This has resulted in some high-profile ML deployment failures from these black box models. Many were too opaque, uncontestable, exhibited unreliable behavior, and worse, reinforced undesirable biases that resulted in poor outcomes for many stakeholders. In response, since about 2015, the field of explainable AI has shifted considerable attention to interpretable ML methods to unpack these more complex deep learning models. However, just as there is no single ML learning technique, there are many corresponding ML interpretability methods to choose from. Let's take a look at some evaluation criteria and a taxonomy to assist you in picking the right interpretable ML method for your use case.
First, let's establish some criteria of what, what comprises a good explanation. Each ML interpretability method comes with different guarantees and limitations, computational requirements, and ex explanation output. When picking a method, it's important to always consider your model's decisions within the context of the requirements of the broader system that it operates in. There are a few general properties of explanations that can be used to guide a selection of ML interpretability methods. First, explanations must be complete. The interpretability method delivers accompanying evidence or explanations for all model outputs. Second, explanations must be accurate. The, uh, the interpretability method's explanations need to accurately reflect the model's predictions with a high degree of precision. Third, explanations must be meaningful. The interpretability method provides explanation output that could be understood by needed stakeholders. Generally, this principle is fulfilled if a user can understand the explanation and or if it is useful to completing a particular task of interest. Note that this principle does not imply that a single explanation is one size fits all for all stakeholders. Fourth, explanations must be consistent. The interpretability methods provide stable explanations on equivalent models to build stakeholder trust. At the core here is really reliability, that stakeholders can reliably trust and understand the model's uh, predictions. Let's now build out a taxonomy to organize the large number of ML interpretability methods. Post hoc or intrinsic. This criteria distinguishes whether interpretability is achieved by restricting the complexity of machine learning model, uh, known as intrinsic, or by applying uh, methods that analyze the model after training, known as post hoc. Intrinsic interpretability refers to machine learning models that are considered interpretable due to their simple structure. So think decision trees or linear models. Post hoc refers to achieving interpretability after model training. Permutation feature importance, for example, is one such post hoc interpretability method. So this is more of considering changes in the feature space and how it affects the output of particular models. Note that post hoc methods can also be applied to intrinsically interpretable models as well. Local or global interpretability. Local refers to whether the scope of interpretability is limited to individual predictions and or a small part of the model's prediction space. These explanations tend to provide a higher precision view, particularly of individual predictions, but lower recall understanding of a model's behavior across all examples. Global here refers to whether the interpretability scope is the entire model's prediction space. This is typically accomplished with aggregated ranked contributions of input variables. As a result, these methods provide a more complete map of the prediction space, but can fail to accurately identify certain areas of the prediction space and certainly individual predictions due to them being obscured by aggregate patterns. Model specific or agnostic. Model specific here refers to the interpretability method being restricted to usage on specific ML models due to their definition. Examples here include interpretability methods that rely upon some intrinsic part of a model's learning method, such as neural network gradients or tree mutual information grained feature importances. Conversely, model agnostic interpretability methods do not rely on model internals, instead relying upon changes in input features or, or their values to understand how they influence the outputs of your model. Examples here include SHAP and LIME that are portable across different model types, including boosted trees and neural networks. This criteria is more of a fuzzy decision boundary between different methods. Note that you can also aggregate the scores of some local model-specific methods like integrated gradients or sample Chapley to provide global views of the model's prediction space using aggregations like averages and medians. So that's what we're referring to here is that hybrid box on the screen. Interpretability methods further differ in explanation output. Many methods return feature statistics, measuring a feature's proportional contribution to the prediction. While others extract concepts, decision rules, feature summary visualizations, counterfactual data points, or even simpler approximate models. 
Now that you are familiar with the concepts in Explainable AI and have a framework for comparing interpretable ML approaches, let's go deeper on a specific technique called integrated gradients. Uh, we're going to walk through some code and applications to see how uh, to incorporate uh, explainable AI into your machine learning workflows. Integrated gradients aims to explain the relationship between a model's predictions in terms of its features. It has many use cases, including understanding feature importances, identifying data skew, and debugging model performance. Integrated gradients is a post hoc explanatory method that works with any differentiable model, such as neural networks, to primarily explain individual predictions. It's a part of a group of methods that uses gradients as a measure of importance in the feature space. IG attributions are a numerical score so that you can aggregate, um, such as by taking a mean or a median, um, attributions to get relative feature importances across different example sets, as well as a uh, more global view of your uh, model's uh, feature importances. Here's an example of visualized integrated gradients compared to just standard model gradients. Early interpretability methods for neural networks assign feature importance scores using gradients, which tell you which features have the steepest local uh, slope relative to your model's prediction at any given point along your model's prediction function. However, gradients only describe local changes in your model's prediction function and do not fully describe your entire model. As your model learns the relationship between the range of individual pixel values and the correct class, the gradients of important features will actually saturate, meaning become increasingly small or even go to zero, despite being critical to the prediction. The middle image contains gradients from the last model layer with respect to the input. Do you see the saturation? It's hard to make out much. The gradients are muted, and it's difficult to make out the edges that actually distinguish the correctly classified camera object. In comparison, notice on the right how integrated gradients is much better at identifying the edges of the camera object, in particular highlighting the pixels around the lens as being important. It captures a better representation of the camera object that is more human interpretable. Recall that your model is a learned function that describes a mapping between your input feature space in this case, image pixel values, in an output space defined by class probabilities between 0 and 1. Consider the simplified model function represented in the two graphs on the screen, which plot your model's predicted probability on the correct class on the y-axis and feature values along the x-axis. On the left, uh, you can see that your model gradients for pixel x are positive between 0 and 0.8, but go to 0 between 0.8 and 1. Pixel X clearly has a significant impact on pushing your model towards 80% predicted probability on the true class. But does it make sense that the importance of the pixel is small or even discontinuous? The intuition uh, on the right here um, behind integradients is to take small, evenly spaced steps in the feature space and accumulate Pixel X's local gradients to create a global score for how much it adds or subtracts to your model's overall output probability. To reinforce this intuition, let's walk through uh, applying integrated gradients to an example fireboat image. At this point, there's two paths uh, forward in this presentation. You can use this implementation of integrated gradients on tensorflow.org without really understanding the details of how it works. This is still value, uh, valid and can add a lot of value to your work. The next half of this talk is going to um, dive much more into how integrated gradients works underneath the hood. And uh, for interested parties, uh, we're going to be covering a mix of code and uh, some of the formulas um, that it's implementing. Integrated gradients can be applied to any differentiable model. In the spirit of the original paper, I used a pre-trained version of the same model, Inception V1, which you can download from TensorFlow Hub. In the tutorial, I also loaded and pre-processed uh, some images with TF's image utilities. Now, if you're thinking about this for a production ML pipeline use case, uh, you can also map these functions into a TF dataset for heavy parallelism or wrap it as a TFX example gen pipeline component as well. Here's the original integrated gradients equation, which we'll be translating from mathematical notation to code in five steps that I will explain in greater detail on subsequent slides. 
My goal here is to provide you a Rosetta Stone between the math, the code, and explanation words to deepen your understanding. If the math notation is unfamiliar to you, or it's been a while since calculus, keep in mind the intuition that it is representing and come back to review the slide as you read through the tutorial in the original Integrated Gradients paper. Again, we're approximating our model's entire prediction function by dividing it up into small, evenly spaced steps, calculating the gradients at each step to represent importance, and then averaging them together. First, you will generate a linear interpolation between the baseline and original image. You can think of interpolated images as small steps in the feature space between your baseline and your input, represented by k over m steps in the original equation. In this example, another way of thinking about that constant is that it is uh, consistently increasing each interpolated image's intensity or brightness as shown in the fireboat images above. In the first code block, the TF lens space function generates a vector of evenly spaced m-step numbers. The second code block contains a vectorized implementation that creates m-step interpolated image tensors with increasing brightness between the baseline and input image tensors. Now let's take a look at how to calculate gradients in order to measure the relationship between changes to input features and changes in your model's predictions. In the case of images, the gradients tell us which pixels had the strongest effect on your model's predicted class probabilities. In the code block is the TensorFlow 2 gradient tape object, which records the gradients between our predicted probabilities in each interpolated image. Note the term in the equation above where this is expressed using the Greek letter delta for partial derivatives. The images on the screen visualize gradients over the first five alpha values. I picked the five gradient images of the giant panda because I thought they were a bit easier to interpret visually. It's hard to make out, but the ghostly images represent small changes in the feature space. So what appears on the screen is kind of ghostly like images that highlight some of the pixels around the eye of a giant panda. Let's visualize the gradients from the previous step to connect theory to practice. Hopefully these charts look familiar from the integrated gradients uh, intuition slide. This plot shows how your model's confidence in the fireboat class varies across alphas on the left. Notice how the gradients or slope of the line largely flattens or saturates between 0.6 and 1 before settling uh, at the final fireboat predicted probability of about 40%. The right plot shows the average gradient magnitudes over alpha a bit more directly. Note how the values sharply approach and even briefly dip below zero after 0.6. In fact, your model learns the most from gradients at lower values of alpha. Intuitively, you could think of this as your model has learned uh, the pixels, in this case, water cannons to make the correct prediction, sending those pixel gradients to zero but is still quite uncertain and still focuses on some of the spurious bridge uh, or water jet pixels as the alpha values approach uh, the original input image. From the equation, you can see that you are summing over m gradients and dividing by m steps. You can implement these two operations together as an average of the local gradients between m predictions and interpolated images. This is a first order approximation of your model's prediction function similar to linear model coefficients. There are many different ways that you can go about computing the numerical approximation of an integral for integrated gradients with different trade-offs in accuracy and convergence across varying functions. A popular class of methods, if you recall from, uh, from your calculus days, is called Riemann sums. In the code block, you can see the implementation of the Riemann trapezoidal method which uses two points uh, to calculate the area of a trapezoid and an average to approximate the integral or area underneath your model's prediction function. From the Riemann sum plots above, you can see that the trapezoidal Riemann sum clearly provides a more accurate approximation and converges more quickly over M steps than the alternatives. And this is evident by less white space underneath the function not covered by the blue shapes. Let's now put all of our integrated gradient code together into a function that you can use in your machine learning workflows 
and comprises only about 20 to 30 lines of code. Our function needs some input parameters. It'll take a TensorFlow model, an input image, a baseline image matching the dimensions of your input image, an M steps parameter for controlling the accuracy of integrated gradients approximation of your model's prediction function. Uh, we'll discuss how to pick this value a little bit later in the talk. And lastly, a batch size parameter for scaling your function to larger M steps and feature spaces like images to control performance. At the top of the function, note the TF function decorator to compile your function into a high performance Calder TensorFlow graph. During testing, this gave me about a 40% speed up, uh, averaging across varying M steps. So thanks and tip of the hat to the TensorFlow Autograph team. First, we can generate alphas using the TF linspace function, which generates a vector uh, range of evenly spaced M step plus one uh, values between zero and one. Note that this is M steps uh, plus one to ensure inclusion of the outer endpoints of your function. Next, we're gonna implement batching. So why batching? Recall that you're creating M steps plus one images at varying intensities between a baseline and input image. For images, even at, uh, at small M steps values, that quickly becomes a large tensor to hold in memory uh, with heaps of values. Calculating gradients is a computationally expensive operation, especially on large tensors. By batching, you are able to control the gradient computation bottleneck to scale your function. The second step is to create a tensor of interpolated images between your baseline and input image. This will return a rank four tensor with shape, batch size, image height, image width, and color channels. Third, we will calculate our gradients between our model's output class probabilities and each interpolated image in the batch. The tensor array stack method then stacks your batch tensor's row rise uh, once at the end of the batching loop. So you have a tensor representing the total gradients between your model's output layer and each interpolated image. For those for familiar with Python list data structures, you can think of the scatter method of a tensor array is analogous to the list extend method. Fourth, you average the total gradients to approximate your model's entire uh, prediction function. Lastly, you scale or normalize your average gradients with respect to your input image to put all of your gradients on the same scale for visualization. Our integrated gradients function uh, returns an IG attributions tensor in the same shape as the original input image. In order to visualize integrated gradients, see the code in the tensorflow.org tutorial, which sums the absolute values of your IG attributions across the image color channels to return a grayscale attribution mass for standalone visualization or overlaying on the original image to highlight important pixels. This plotting method captures the relative impact of pixels on the model's predictions as well. Another visualization option for you to try that has been developed in uh, later research is to preserve the direction of the gradient sign, either a plus or a minus, for visualizing on different channels to more accurately represent how the features might combine. So let's compare integrated gradients against the criteria that we established outlining um, what a good prediction looks like to see how it stacks up. The first, IG attributions are complete. The sum of IG attributions for all features is equal to the difference in your model's output for its input features and your model's output for the baseline. Note in practice, this allows you to numerically solve for the M steps hyperparameter to improve the approximation accuracy of your model as shown in the equations below. See the long form integrated gradients tutorial for some example code on how to calculate and check the M steps parameter to ensure that uh, your integrated gradients are accurately approximating your model. IG attributions are sensitive as well, which is to say that they are accurate. All input features that differ between the input and baseline uh, attributions and result in different predictions will receive non-zero attribution by integrated gradients. So you can ensure that every pixel that is important to your model's prediction will be reflected by integrated gradients. IG attributions uh, will also be the same for functionally equivalent models, which means uh, they are consistent 
and that their attributions are reproducible. Lastly, IG attributions uh, preserve linear relationships in the model. Linear relationships are generally uh, more interpretable, but you may be wondering, are they necessarily meaningful to all stakeholders? Integrated gradients has become a popular interpretability technique due to some of these desirable uh, interpretability properties, as well as its computational efficiency relative to alternatives that has allowed it to scale to much larger networks, as well as feature spaces such as images. Note this talk has been scoped to just focus on object detection models for integrated gradients, but you can actually apply integrated gradients to any differentiable model, including those that take uh, text or structured data as input as well. Integrated gradients, like many interpretable ML techniques, does fall short of providing meaningful explanations. Will all stakeholders be able to consistently understand explanations in the feature space, like pixel attribution maps? Probably not. There are some additional limitations on its use to keep in mind. Integrated gradients provides local, not global interpretability. IG attributions can be aggregated using averages or quantiles to describe global properties of your model's predictions, um, but research is still inconclusive on whether this, uh, on the degree to which this representation accurately captures uh, the entirety of your global model performance. IG interpretability is in relation to individual features, not feature interactions and combinations. This limits the expressiveness of its explanations to stakeholders to describe complex modeling processes. IG also only works with differentiable ML models due to needing gradients as their input. So no tree-based models. Uh, for that, uh, take a look at um, some other model agnostic approaches like sample Chapley values. Lastly, it's hard to select good baselines for integrated gradients, and we'll return to this concept uh, in, in a few slides. Um, typically, black images of uh, zero value pixels um, or a zero embedding vector uh, for text are good defaults, but they do have some, um, they do have some pitfalls uh, that we'll discuss. Let's now take a look at using integrated gradients for different production ML use cases, the first of which is feature importances. Without any prior understanding of how to uh, differentiate between a golden retriever and a yellow Labrador retriever, what can you learn from IG's feature importances? Review the golden retriever attribution mass and the overlay of the original image. Notice how its pixel intensities are primarily highlighted on the face and shape of the dog, but are brightest on the legs and tail areas of lengthy and wavy fur. A quick Google search uh, validates that this is indeed a key distinguishing feature of golden retrievers compared to yellow Labrador retrievers. Comparatively, IG also highlights the face and body shape of the Labrador retriever with a density of right pixels on its straight and uh, short fur coat. This provides additional evidence toward the length and texture of the coats being key differentiators between these two dog breeds. From just visual inspection of these IG attributions alone, you now have insight into the underlying causal structure between distinguishing golden retrievers and yellow Labrador retrievers without any prior knowledge. Going forward, you can use this insight to improve your model's performance further through refining its learned representations of these two dog breeds by retraining with additional examples. The next use case for integrated gradients is debugging data skew. To complement existing production ML monitoring of dataset and model performance statistics, tracking IG feature importances across time and data splits, uh, such as next day splits, uh, train dev test splits, allow for meaningful monitoring of train serving skew and drift. The model Inception V1 is trained on about 1,000 example images per class, one of which is military uniforms. So in this example, at present, there's about um, 195 countries around the world with significantly different military uniforms. Additionally, meaning, uh, military uniforms have changed quite considerably over time, even within the same country. As a result, the potential input space for military uniforms is enormous, with many uniforms overrepresented, such as the US military, 
while others sparsely represented and or absent from the training data altogether, such as the image below the Greece uh, Presidential Guard. Inception V1 correctly classifies the top image of United States Rear Admiral and computer scientist Grace Hopper under the uh, correct class military uniform. From visual inspection of the feature attributions, uh, you can see that IG correctly highlights pixels around the shirt collar and tie, military insignia on the jacket and hat, and various pixels around her face. Conversely, below is an image of United States General Ulysses S. Grant, circa 1865. He's wearing a military uniform for the same country as Real Admiral Hopper, but how well can the model identify a military uniform in this image taken 120 years earlier? Not well, as evidenced by the model's predictions of trench coat and suit before military uniform. From visual inspection of the IG attribution mass, the mass suggests that the model identified the military insignia uh, patch on the right shoulder, but was much more interested in the length of the coat. Using this insight, you can improve model performance by adding data augmentation to your input data pipeline to include additional colorless images, as well as example images with military coats, uh, with longer military coats. On the last image at the bottom, yikes, Inception V1 predicted the image of a Greek presidential guard as a vestment with low confidence. The underlying training data does not appear to have sufficient representation in density of Greek military uniforms. So to summarize, military uniforms change across time and space, like many um, domains that you will encounter in production machine learning. While IG attributions alone will not identify or fix data skewer bias, when combined with model evaluation uh, metrics and data set statistics, IG attributions provide you with a guided path forward to collecting more and diverse data set, more and diverse data to improve model performance. IG feature attributions provide a useful debugging complement to data set statistics and model evaluation metrics as well to better inform corrective actions for model performance. When using IG feature attributions for debugging, you are looking uh, for insights into some of the following questions. What features are important? How well does the model's learn features generalize? And does the model learn incorrect or spurious features in the image? These attributions are from integrated gradients are well suited for counterfactual reasoning to gain insight into your model's performance and limitations. This involves comparing feature attributions for images of the same class that receive correct and incorrect predictions side by side. To go deeper on model uh, debugging to inform corrective actions, check out the Google AI What If tool to interactively inspect your dataset, your model, as well as incorporate IG feature attributions for deeper feature level insight as well. Everything that we have talked about so far in this talk is open source. By the way, in case uh, you are interested, Google Cloud does have a managed uh, service called Explainable AI for incorporating into your production machine learning workflows. It supports uh, interpretability methods, including integrated gradients, sample Chapley, and XRAI. It also includes useful utilities and plotting methods for visualizing these feature importances and attribution mass. Google Cloud's AutoML Tables product also incorporates explainability as a first-class citizen to its predictions with permutation feature importance for global interpretability and sample Chapley for feature importances on individual predictions. Google Cloud's uh, explainable AI is a great way to get started in, in this space and in incorporating more complex models that deliver higher accuracy into your machine learning systems while also providing interpretable predictions that build understanding and trust among your models and users. Let's revisit the concept of baselines that we introduced in the deep dive and integrated gradients and discuss future explainable AI research directions to guide your further learning. So as we covered in the deep dive on integrated gradients, integrated gradients has a baseline selection problem. Defining missingness or a starting point in the feature space for comparison is at the core of machine learning and interpretability methods. For integrated gradients, this concept is encoded as a baseline. 
A baseline is an input image in this case that is used as a starting point for calculating feature importance, generally defaulting to a black image with zero pixel values or a zero embedding vector for text. The implication of a black baseline is if black pixels are important to the prediction, they will actually receive no attribution. As a result, the choice of a baseline plays a central role in interpreting and visualizing integrated gradients pixel feature importances. So how do we select a good baseline? Ultimately, picking any constant color baseline has potential interpretation problems through just visual inspection alone without consideration of the underlying attribution values in their signs. So when we talk about meaningful when discussing ML interpretability techniques, this is where integrated gradients falls a bit short of explainability. Baseline selection is still an active area of research with various proposals being put forward since the original paper, including averaging across multiple random baselines, blurring inputs, or several other uh, methods as well. On the left, you can see how a random noise baseline also throws off the interpretability of IG attributions on the fireboat image. On the right, you can actually see how IG attributions completely miss the solid black beetle in the top image and how the changing of the baseline to a white image to correct for this contrast um, corrects the uh, interpretation of the IG feature attributions. So how can we improve upon IG and its baseline selection problem? Introducing a method called XRAI, the newest explainable AI method from Google Research, which is also now available in the explainable AI products on Google Cloud as well. It builds upon integrated gradients using a novel region-based attribution method to overcome the baseline selection problem. As you can see in the image on the right, instead of identifying individually important pixels, XRI instead is creating or highlighting a region of the original image as being important to the prediction. The intuition behind XRAI is it overcomes the baseline selection problem by using a black and a white baseline image to compute IG attributions so pixel attributions aren't biased towards a single arbitrary selected baseline. It uses these scores to then identify a group of pixels on the original image. Implementing XRAI can be broken down into four steps as shown above on the image of two goldfinches. First, XRAI divides an image up into many small overlapping regions. Second, XRAI computes IG attributions for both black and white baseline images within those small regions. Third, XRAI rank orders the regions based on which have the most positive IG attributions. Fourth, XRAI outputs the most important regions for the prediction of a given class. In this case above, it returns the regions that have positive attributions, identifying the two goldfinches uh, separately in the image. XRAI outperforms existing image-based attribution techniques on several standard industry benchmarks with human labeling. The metrics on the right indicate XRAI's superior performance in recall of objects of interest in the dataset, and also the precision as well with localized human-labeled regions. It also has the added benefit over integrated gradients of returning regions from the original image, uh, which tend to be more human interpretable than individual pixels alone. Now that I've taken you to the frontiers of ML interpretability methods, I want to conclude this lecture with a few personal predictions on future directions for explainable AI over the next few years. First, explainable AI will become a key standardized component of automated production ML pipelines and operational monitoring. Second, model agnostic interpretability methods will continue to be the focus of explainable uh, research. Intrinsic models will certainly still be important, but the focus will really be on model agnostic methods that work across different ML learning techniques. Third, explainable AI will uh, converge with causal inference to improve machine learning reliability and generalization. Fourth, explanations um, from uh, ML interpretability methods will look to add uncertainty estimates as a means of further improving um, human interpretation 
and also further building trust in when explanations are reliable and when they may not be. Lastly, explainable interfaces will uh, improve to better translate model understanding to human understanding and reach more stakeholders. This might look like more codeless explanation interfaces that are interactive and translate prediction explanations to concepts expressed in um, more human interpretable forms such as natural language. And with that, thank you very much for your time. I certainly hope uh, that this talk provided you a path forward to include explainable AI into your machine learning workflows. Thank you for your time. <laughs>